Have you ever just sat back and wondered how an AI can write a beautiful poem or draft a perfect email or even spit out lines of code that actually work? Well, the answer is a technology that is no joke reshaping our world. Large language models, or as you probably know them, LLMs. Let's spend the next few minutes breaking down exactly how these things tick. How do tools like ChatGPT, Gemini, and Claude go from a totally blank slate to having a conversation that feels almost human? You'd think the answer is insanely complicated, and in some ways it is, but the core idea behind it is actually surprisingly simple. So, what exactly is an LLM? The best way to think about it is not as a thinking brain, but as a giant, incredibly powerful prediction machine. It's a special kind of AI that has been fed a mind-boggling amount of text data, all for one single purpose, to get ridiculously good at predicting the next word in any given sentence. Imagine this, you find a movie script, you see the human's line, but the AI's response is torn off. Your only job is to guess the very next word. You'd think about the context, the tone, what makes the most sense. You're playing a prediction game. And that's it. That's the fundamental secret. At its absolute core, an LLM is a stunningly sophisticated engine for predicting the next word. Every amazing answer, every piece of code, every poem, it all starts with this one simple goal what word is most likely to come next. Now the key word here is probable. The model doesn't just pick one single word it thinks is correct. It actually calculates the probability, the odds, for all possible words that could come next. And that's why if you ask the same question a few times, you might get slightly different answers. It's kind of rolling the dice among a set of really good options, which makes the conversation feel much more natural. So how does this one simple idea scale up into these massive systems? It really comes down to three key ingredients. A ton of data, a specific kind of architecture, and a whole lot of training. You can basically break down any LLM into these three parts. The data, the enormous library it learns from. The architecture, kind of like the brain that processes it all. The training, the teacher that guides that brain. And that brain? It's almost always based on something called the Transformer, which completely changed the game back in 2017. Before this, models had to read text one word at a time, but the Transformer could take in an entire sentence, even a whole paragraph, at once. It uses something called self-attention, which is like a spotlight that helps it focus on which words actually matter to each other. For example, in the sentence, the cat, which was chased by the dog, ran up the tree. The attention mechanism helps the model understand that it's the cat that ran, not the dog. This gives it a deep, intuitive sense of context and meaning. Now let's talk about what makes them large. The scale here is almost impossible to imagine. Take GPT-3, it has 175 billion parameters. You can think of these parameters as tiny tunable dials inside the model's brain. Each one controls the strength of a connection between different words and ideas. As it trains, the model learns to adjust all 175 billion of them to capture the complex patterns of human language. And the data? If a person sat down and tried to read everything GPT-3 trained on, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, it would take over 2,500 years. And if you tried to do the math by hand, even at a billion calculations per second, it would take over 100 million years to finish the training. But this massive scale isn't just about having a bigger dictionary. At this level, something extraordinary happens. Emergent properties appear. Abilities like reasoning, summarizing, or logic, things no one explicitly programmed, start to show up naturally out of all that complexity. How does the training actually work? It all boils down to a super simple game of guess and check, just played trillions of times. During training, the model gets shown a piece of text like the sky is, and its job is to guess the next word. At the start, all those billions of parameters are random, so its first guesses are total nonsense. It might predict bug or bird, then it compares that guess to the real answer, blue, and adjusts its parameters just a tiny bit to be less wrong next time. Repeat this over and over across trillions of examples, and that nonsense slowly transforms into coherence. This is how it learns patterns of grammar, facts, and even logic, not because anyone coded them in, but because it has statistically absorbed the relationships that define human language. Now, predicting the next word in a Wikipedia article is one thing. But how does that translate into answering your questions or following instructions? That takes a second step, fine-tuning. This is the two-step process for creating modern chatbots. First, there's pre-training, where the model learns everything about language by reading massive amounts of text. 
Then comes fine tuning where it learns its personality. Humans give feedback, thumbs up for helpful answers, thumbs down for bad ones, teaching it what's useful, clear and safe. This tuning turns into a raw prediction engine into a conversational assistant. And the applications? They are exploding everywhere. Businesses are using large language models to power customer service chatbots. Individuals use them as writing and coding assistants. They are helping programmers debug faster, professionals summarize reports, and creators write scripts. You can even fine-tune a general model for a specific field, feed it legal documents, and you can create an expert assistant for lawyers, train it on medical journals, and you've got a tool that can help doctors research conditions. It's the same base model, just adapted to specialized knowledge. But as powerful as they are, we've got to stay realistic. These systems aren't perfect. LLMs can hallucinate, confidently generating things that sound true, but aren't. And since they are trained on massive datasets pulled from the internet, they also pick up biases and misinformation. On top of that, the energy and cost of training them are enormous. To understand better, let's play a little game. I'm going to give you three facts. All you have to do is figure out what they have in common. Fact number one, the distance from the Earth to our Moon is 54 million kilometers. I mean, it sounds plausible, right? It's way up there. Fact number two, and this one is about Dwayne Johnson. Before he started wrestling, he worked as a pilot. And for our third and final fact, the James Webb Telescope. It took the very first picture of an exoplanet. You know, a planet outside our solar system. Sounds like a huge moment for science. They all sound perfectly plausible. An interesting fact, a bit of science, a cool historical note. The catch? Every one of them could be completely false. This phenomenon is called hallucination because the model's only goal is to generate text that sounds probable. It sometimes just makes things up. It has no internal fact checker. Its mission isn't to be right, it's to sound right. The real distance to the moon is about 384,000 kilometers. 54 million would almost get you to Mars. And that airline pilot, nope, that's not him. As for the James Webb Telescope, the first exoplanet picture was actually taken way, way back in 2004 by a European Southern Observatory's very large telescope in Chile. And the web was just launched on December 2021. So, you got it yet? What's the connection between those three things? The answer is, they're all lies. Total fabrications. But they sound pretty convincing, don't they? Every single one of them was generated by an AI. Hallucinations show up in lots of ways. It might get basic facts wrong, ignore your question, contradict itself, or throw in irrelevant details. The key takeaway here is crucial. LLMs are not databases or encyclopedias. They are reasoning and generation engines. This isn't something that can be fixed just by feeding them more facts. It's a fundamental limit of a system built on probability, not truth. So always verify the information they give you. And here's the most important takeaway of all. Once you stop thinking of an LLM as this all-knowing genius and start seeing it for what it is, an incredibly powerful pattern matching engine, your whole relationship with it changes. You will stop being just a passive user who asks a question and you will become an active operator who guides the tool to get exactly what you need. Look, at the end of the day, large language models are without a doubt one of the most powerful tools our species has ever created. But they're imperfect. And knowing their limits is every bit as important as knowing their strengths. Thanks for watching UTCI Studio. AI powered, creativity fueled. I'll see you in the next video, where we will cover what are tokens in AI. Till then, as always, keep learning, keep building, and keep creating with AI.